Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another episode of the Arsenal Transfer Show. Joining you every morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Hope you're doing good. Hope you're doing well. Uh, first things first, happy birthday, Miss Lynn Simpson in the chat box. Those that listen to the this podcast will know that Lynn is a long-time listener of the channel uh, and attendee of plenty of the live shows that we have attended as well. Uh, I've seen in the chat box it is indeed Lynn's birthday and she's left a very kind message, which I'm not going to read out because it's very it'd be very patronising to do that. But thank you, Lynn. I really appreciate it. Very kind indeed and happy birthday to you. And good morning to everybody joining us live uh, in the chat box. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be joining us on Catch Up, either on audio or on video platforms. I hope you're good. I hope you are well. Uh, let's say good morning to people joining us in the chat box. PJ, good morning to you, to Matt G, to Blackshine, to Harvey, to Carl, to Temi, Abdullahi, uh, PJ, uh, Amira, Damien. Uh, we've got Stephen, Carlton, Rich. We've got Paul. Uh, we've got uh, Matt G asking whether or not Smith Rowe is an eight because he's a annoying person. Anthony, good morning to you. Uh, Mike, Christopher, good morning, everybody. Uh, now, first things first, uh, I was absolutely inundated uh, yesterday with messages. I've not been able to respond to all of them. Uh, I, I'm not ignoring you, I promise. I'm going to try and get around to all of them as many as I can, but I, I spent a good hour yesterday replying to as many as I could. Um, and I'm still not done. Thank you to everybody that left messages. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, go watch yesterday's show. I think I left a timestamp at around 49 minutes to explain why. But I have got an announcement to talk about at the end of the new section at the start of part two, which I'm very excited about as well. Uh, let's uh, crack on with today's stories. Do drop a like and subscribe, though, of course, if you're new. Gabriel Martinelli and Brazil uh, have progressed to the quarterfinals of the World Cup after their significant win over South Korea. Martinelli, of course, came off the bench in this game in a fixture which kind of demonstrated just how good Brazil are. You know, goals from Richarlison and uh, Paqueta and Neymar and Vinicius Jr. Uh, all progressed Brazil through in a very comfortable victory and kind of showed the challenge that other nations have if they're going to beat Brazil. There is still part of me that thinks there is something about Brazil that can be got at. There's something about the game against Switzerland that made me think, hmm, I think that a really, you know, a decent test to this Brazil side could see them come a bit unstuck. Now, unfortunately, they're probably not going to face a significant test, really. I mean, I think they've got Croatia in the next round because, of course, Croatia did knock out Japan and Takahiro Tomiyasu uh, as well, which is a frustration for Tomiyasu, but, of course, a benefit to Arsenal to get him back much sooner. Um, it's a frustration for him, of course, but uh, I think... Brazil need to be tested, and I don't think they've been tested really yet. And when they were tested, um, and specifically talking about um, Switzerland, they they really did challenge them, and it was a struggle until Casemiro's goal. So I think that maybe when they face a very decent side, it might be a bit trickier than they've faced so far during these ultimate uh, World Cup kind of group stage and early knockout rounds. Uh, Gabriel is amongst the Arsenal players that have arrived in Dubai to start their warm weather training camp. Of course, we'll bring you updates from Arsenal's friendlies in which they'll take place uh, against Lyon and against Milan. They play Lyon on Thursday at 3.30 UK time. I don't know how uh, people can watch it yet. We're still waiting for information on that. I know that you'll be able to listen to it, at least on the Arsenal website. But how they're going to watch it, we still are waiting for confirmation on that. But I'm looking forward, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, to getting a glimpse of what the players have been doing. Of course, and I didn't cover this in yesterday's show, and I meant to, so apologies for that. But Arsenal did lose in a friendly behind closed doors against uh, Watford. Uh, and uh, it was, to be fair, 2-1 at half time with all the senior players playing. We then took off all the senior players and brought on a youth side in the second half, and it then went to 4-2. So, um, yeah, I think there's obviously uh, something to be taken from that. I saw a lot of people kind of melting down when it had been revealed we'd lost 4-2. Without even going into detail about the kind of the game, it was that we were 2-1 up with the senior players. And then, of course, in the second half with the, uh, the, the youth players, uh, of course, that meant that we then lost that game, unfortunately. But uh, it should hopefully be a lot more positive going into these games against Milan and Leon. Uh, we will still have, of course, a lot of our starting players away and at the World Cup, and we still need to uh, we still need to improve, obviously, the quality that's in the group. And we hopefully will do that in January. And we've got some transfer stories to discuss. Uh, according to Fabrizio Romano, Arsenal are among the clubs that are scouting their own former player 
Yunus Musa. Now this is a bit of a um, this is a bit of a, a kind of a funny one considering we were only just the other day talking about Ismail Banasser, uh, the uh, Algerian centre midfielder for AC Milan, formerly of course of the Arsenal uh, academy, who well, didn't come through the academy but joined the academy and then left before making a senior appearance. Yunus Musa again. Came through at Hale End, came through at the academy uh, and signed there and developed there, but left before making a senior appearance for Valencia. He now too is being scouted by Arsenal. So maybe Arsenal have a little bit of regret about some of the players that they ended up letting go of. Uh, Yuri Tielemans is yet to commit to any club, according to Romano as well. Uh, he has not yet committed the idea of moving to Arsenal. That said, I'm aware that Arsenal, of course, have always been very much in the mind of Tielemans and were very keen on him in the summer, but willing to wait until the end of his contract to try and snap him up on a free move in the summer. That is the aim of the club, to try and see if they can get him on a free. But maybe we'll move on to other targets should his form continue to dip. They are only willing to bring in players that they believe to be of the utmost quality. Let's go to Mikhailo Mudrik, uh, who again is always being linked to Arsenal. A really good story actually came out yesterday talking about the ideas of the plan for Mudrik. Supposedly and reportedly Mikel Arteta sees Mudrik as someone that he can indeed coach to become more versatile. Someone that he believes could become like a player that I guess like if you think about Martinelli can play in a number of positions. But Mudrik has played almost exclusively on the left-hand side. But Ben Jacobs of CBS Sports said, Arteta feels Mudrik can be developed into a more versatile player. At the moment, he's lightning quick, a good eye for goal. And I think Arteta feels that he can spend more time during games in central areas. One to watch from an Arsenal point of view. So very interesting indeed that despite the fact that we look at Mudrik as very much a left-sided player, Ben Jacobs claiming there that he feels as though Mudrik could and is the intention of Arteta to kind of shift him into a more versatile option for the forward line. Uh, Gibriel So of Frankfurt, the Switzerland international midfielder, has been playing slightly ahead of Xhaka and Froila in this midfield at the World Cup for Switzerland. Is also said to be on the radar of Arsenal. Coming through, uh, they're playing in Germany, of course, as well. If he's the level of quality that we're looking for, I'm not so sure. I did think Arsenal might go for someone of a higher calibre. Haven't seen loads of him, um, but hasn't cropped up on my radar as someone that I thought, wow, you know, this is going to be the guy that takes on Xhaka's role and progressing it forwards. But he's playing slightly further ahead of Xhaka in the Swiss team at the moment. Whether or not that means he would compete more competitively with Odegaard and Fabio Vieira, I'm not sure. I need to do a little bit more research on him. But reportedly, Arsenal are one of the teams that are interested in Jibril. So, uh, and lastly, is this story about Manuel Locatelli, which is very, very interesting indeed. Now, for the benefits of uh, this being a very legal case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share you in front of the screen so I don't mess up any of these quotes. uh, The Football Italia uh, article, which talks and has uh, kind of translated the article, I think originally coming from Calcio. Uh, So let's read through this together because it is very, very interesting indeed. So, uh, so the uh, the article by Susie Campanale uh, of, of Football Italia has said that uh, wiretapped conversations suggest that then Juventus chief Fabio Paratici, of course, now at Spurs, specifically named Arsenal director Edu when negotiating, quote, mates rates with Sassuolo for Manuel Locatelli. The investigation into allegations of financial irregularities at Juve saw the public prosecutor in Turin collect hours and hours of wiretapped phone calls. Many of those have been released as part of the dossier requesting a trial, which is legal in Italy because there is no jury system and therefore no risk of influencing the outcome. Some of these conversations are about specific transfers that raised eyebrows on the way Juventus operated, including the unusual deal for Locatelli. Arsenal were prepared to pay more to Sassuolo for the players' wages, but Locatelli had his heart set on Juve and the club knew that put them in a huge advantage. Here we go with the uh, wiretapped conversations, according to Football Italia and uh, where they're sourcing, I believe, Calcio Mercato. Uh, Paratici said to Sassuolo director Gianno Carnavali in the wiretap published by La Repubblica newspaper, if I sit down at the table and the conditions you offer me are the same you are giving to Edu of Arsenal, who you have never met in your entire life, then what is the added value of our decade-long rapport? What happens to the 8 million euros you earn in six months with Mera Demiral, who you'd never even heard of, or our decisive support when you got Sensi, the 30 million euros you got from Lirola? 
paratichi who left Juventus in 2021 for a new role at Spurs, is the absolute centre of the investigation and name-checked repeatedly by other members of the club who are alarmed with his dealings. This is chaotic. Uh, I've never really kind of heard this uh, this kind of chaos before in my life. But uh, why tap conversation? I say never heard this before in my life. This is talking about Italian football once again. These wiretap conversations being released, um, very interesting indeed. Edu being name-checked amongst plenty more of this is also very interesting. There is surely more to come out from this story in the future, and we will, of course, bring you any updates on this story as they come through. But Spurs' executive, Fabio Paratici, formerly of Juventus at the time of when this investigation is being focused on, it could come back to haunt him, it seems. So... Yes, very, very interesting. Anyway, we're going to move to part two, your questions and a very special announcement after this. So uh, this is what I want to share with you guys. Uh, what I talked about yesterday, obviously, and the idea of sharing and being more open about uh, where I'm at with my personal fitness and wanting to be better and wanting to go on kind of a bit of a journey with you guys and that. Uh, I did a lot of work on my day off yesterday uh, into trying collaborating and creating something um, about, you know, fitness and also relating it to Arsenal. And I'm very, very happy to say that I think we've managed to do that in a very short amount of time. And what I'm hoping to come from this is a very special weekly podcast that we're going to be able to bring to you every week. And we're actually going to be recording the first episode of this tonight. Uh, the aim is that they will be pre-recorded podcasts, not live podcasts. They will go out on YouTube. They'll premiere on YouTube, of course. So there'll be a live chat when they premiere. I'm still finalizing when I want them to go out, but we'll be recording them on Tuesday evenings, which means they'll probably go out uh mornings or midday on wednesdays uh i am very very lucky to be friends with a lot of people within the arsenal community but i think we've managed to collect uh, a group of people to join me on this journey of a podcast every single week that i think is going to be able to provide you some great insight into player injuries into player fitness we're going to have features hopefully as well uh, and also I'm looking forward to having some great chat about Arsenal. Now, I want to make this clear. This is an Arsenal podcast first and foremost. So if you enjoy it, you know, your usual podcasts and you know the ones I'm talking about, all the chat about the weekend's game, what's going to be happening, all the latest news, all of that will also be talked about. So this is going to be very much first and foremost an Arsenal podcast. The difference between this and perhaps the others that you uh, listen to is that we've got three fantastic guests. First of all, we've got Sophie from the Highbury Squad, Owen from the Gunas Pod, and Dr. Raj Prabhra, of course, at 3C perform uh, Performance, who is a physiotherapist specializing in sports injuries and produces content on his own YouTube channel looking at sports injuries. So in this podcast, when we have serious injuries to players like Gabriel Jesus that we are experiencing, we'll be talking about at length this evening, we'll be able to get some more expert insight from Dr. Raj talking specifically about the injuries of players but we're also in this going to be talking about our own fitness journeys what we're doing to improve our fitness you know how we're trying to do things and I did say in yesterday's show that I wanted to get you guys involved with uh, this show and this kind of journey and what we're also going to be doing is because this is pre-recorded it means I'm going to be able to do some editing which is something I've not really done too much of because the shows are always tending to be live um, so I'm going to be doing some editing and we're going to be bringing in some features these will be short 10 minute interviews with uh, people from the community within the space. But also, I think what's going to be great is to be able to use our own contacts and speak to people within the game that focus on fitness, on nutrition, on behind the scenes stuff, on food, um, preparation, recovery, rehabilitation. And we're going to be bringing you hopefully some features on the monthly slash weekly. I don't know when how regular the features will be, but obviously the podcast is going to be weekly. Uh, and we're going to add those into the podcast as well, headed up by all four of us. So this is what it's going to be. I'm not sure on a name yet. I've put in quote marks there, the Arsenal Fitness Podcast. I think I'm going to change that. Um, I think I'm certainly going to make it maybe a little bit shorter, a little more snappy. If you've got any ideas, feel free to leave them in the chat box and the uh, comment section, of course, after the show as well. But yes, I I've always wanted to have a, a podcast back on the channel. Um, we haven't had a podcast in a while. We used to do podcasts on a Sunday at 8.30. 
uh, regularity of guests and you know the availability of guests was always a problem and so unfortunately we kind of canned it a bit quietly and have just gone go I've been going on doing the uh the morning shows but finally a weekly regular podcast will be returning to the channel that will be releasing most likely Wednesday morning slash midday UK time so I look forward to bringing you this uh, and I look forward to seeing what happens with it and where it goes uh, I'm excited about it it could still change things can happen we all know that but uh, yeah I'm hopefully um, going to be looking at uh, starting this podcast uh, as early as maybe you'll be able to hear the first episode tomorrow, which would be fantastic. Anyway, uh, let's go to part two then and your questions uh, in the chat box about what we've been discussing. Aya says, Tom, you're saying somehow, somewhere Spurs could be screwed in some way. I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. I think this is very much Paratici uh, from Juve, you know, and what he did there. Whatever he's done at Spurs... We don't know. So I'm not saying that, but who knows what will happen. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if this goes back to bite him. And then uh, obviously that might mean he, I don't know what will happen for his position at Spurs if he's found guilty of all of this stuff. If it is indeed true, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the investigation is, is ongoing. Uh, Temi says, does Jesus get a medal if Brazil win the World Cup? Yes, I think he does. I think everyone in the squad gets a medal, even if you haven't even played. I think you do, but... Uh, their third choice goalkeeper came off the bench yesterday and played. So there you go. Uh, I think most of them, yeah, all of them will get a medal if they win. Uh, Lynn says, Tom, with Arteta and Adu going to the USA and meeting Stan and Josh, do you think that they have the players and they were hoping to get this rubber stamped with Stan giving them 200% backing? I think that this would have been a scheduled meeting anyway. If you remember last year uh, during the January window, Arteta uh, actually travelled to the US to meet with the Cronkies, remember there's that whole thing, him being at a US, I can't, maybe it was a Denver Nuggets game, and uh, or maybe it was an Avalanche game, actually. And then it obviously transpired that there were talks about his contract. I think this is more of a scheduled thing that they do every year, maybe going into the January window. It means that they can discuss things ahead of what is going to be a really important transfer window for Arsenal. But I'm sure that that was talked about. I'd be shocked if it wasn't talked about what plans were for January in this. Uh, so, yeah, really looking forward to it. Um Let's go. Sasha says, I read this, but it wasn't clear what the big deal was. Juve's issues are related to inflating the value of assets, players for accounting purposes and hiding losses, aren't they? I'm not sure, Sasha, to be honest. Uh, but what I would say is that this discussion, this wiretap phone call was potential evidence against Paratici. Very interesting indeed to just even discuss. Julian says, Tom, what are your thoughts on the Balogun recall rumours? Um, you know, what's really funny is that, and I'll be very honest about this, I tweeted on, I want to say Saturday, I think it was, maybe it was Sunday, Sunday morning. I tweeted on Sunday morning that it was my understanding that following Balogun had a recall clause inserted into his contract. Um, and then after I tweeted that, and I get how these things are picked up, and I saw it was picked up by, you know, different aggregators and stuff, and that's fine, you know, I've got an issue with that. But it started to, it's funny how things can get really twisted, you know, all I tweeted was that, that that the recall clause exists, you know, that it exists. I also added on that that I'd be very surprised if Arsenal did recall Balogun uh, from his loan. I think my expectation would be is that they would let him continue onwards. I was only purely putting the tweet out there because people had been asking whether or not it's a possibility he could come back. And I have seen so many kind of things come out from that, um, the Balogun thing. It just, it always it's worth you always trying to find the, the source. Uh, and if you report it, naming the source. Uh, Mohammed says, in Tommy Ass's interview, when he heard about Jesus' injury, interesting point, him not knowing. He asked, what is it? His knee? Does that confirm Jesus has been playing with a knee issue already? I don't think we can make that leap, Mohammed, to be honest. I understand why people have made that leap about the potential for, a, a, you know, his knee being a problem before. I don't know if he suffered with a knee injury. I think he may have done when he was at Man City. But footballers always kind of first in their mind go to the knee because it can be the most damaging potential injury for a player. So I guess Tommy Asu was asking about that because he was worried about it being the knee. I don't think it's necessarily something we need to read more into that he already knew there was a problem. But there's nothing to say that there, there couldn't have been a problem um, there beforehand. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how, of course, Joe Zeus's injury transpires. And when we get more information on it, you can be sure that on our Arsenal Fitness podcast that we'll be doing, Dr. Raja will be able to bring us some really interesting uh, insight into what that means for recovery and how it might affect him in the future. Um, Bizarre says, uh, would Josko Gvardiol be a good fit for Arsenal and should we go for him? He's been solid. 
In short, yes, he would. But unfortunately, I just don't see that happening for Arsenal. Yes, he's a fantastic left-footed defender that would obviously bring loads of quality. But Chelsea are already on this train. Other play other teams are already on this train. And I don't see us spending the upwards of 70-odd million quid that it's going to take to sign him when we have Gabriel already there. Uh, Marcus says, indeed, they met last year. But what came of that meeting? Arteta's contract, I think, is what came of that meeting, in all honesty. Uh, that was the main reason why I think they met. They met towards the end of the January window. So I don't think it was necessarily all about um, transfers. I think it was more about Arteta's future at the club. And uh, that ultimately ended in him renewing his deal. Uh, Mohamed says, hi, Tom. Why are Arsenal not looking at Ismail Assar? Proven versatile wing. Or also, we should be looking at Yunus Musa as a long-term replacement for Partey. He's a very good 22-year-old top talent. I don't think Yunus Musa necessarily strikes me as a long-term Partey replacement personally. And Ismail Assar, I think Arsenal can go for better. You know, Ismail Assar, let's have a, just have a look at his profile quickly. Playing at the World Cup, of course, this summer for Senegal. He's 24 years of age now. Now, I think Arsenal should be looking to try and bring in someone that's going to bring them uh, a younger kind of prospect, the Mudrick kind of age. I also think Watford are going to ask for something silly, even though his contract runs out in 2024. I still think they're going to ask for something silly. But if you said that he was joining in the January window, maybe on loan for six months with an option, I don't think I'd say necessarily no to that as giving us a little bit more firepower. I just think there are better options out there than Ismail Assar, personally. Uh, let's go to Amira, uh, who says, uh, favourite non-football moment in the World Cup so far? Mine is seeing Tommy Yasu surprised by something new every time he's doing an interview. Poor guy is always the last to know things. <laughs> Favourite off-field, I suppose is the best way to put it, off-field moment at the World Cup. Uh, je suis une baguette. That might be my favourite. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just type into Twitter, je suis une baguette. I think that might be my favourite thing about this World Cup. Even with Ireland not there. Very well represented indeed. Uh, Nuna Worship says, Tom, I know this is not the most popular thing due to the tweets he made last season, but I think we should go and get Ivan Tony if Jesus is out for most of part this season. What are your thoughts? People kind of know my thoughts about Ivan Tony. I'm not really keen on him. Uh, I think he's made too many errors. We've got this betting situation going on at the moment. We don't even know. What's, I don't even haven't even heard of what the uh, the ramifications of that will be, if any, yet. But you could even face a ban. I remember when Kieran Trippier was banned because uh, he was involved in uh, in the betting side of things. And he was, I mean, Tri Tony's done something like 300 plus bets. I don't know what's happened. I don't know if there's any extra information. Let's have a quick check. Betting. Uh, charged. He was charged. So I don't know of any update on that. That was on November 17th. When did he have until respond? Ivan Tony has until Thursday, November 24th to provide a response I don't think we'll see a response. Uh, I don't think we've heard about anything about responding yet, but who knows? Uh, maybe maybe things are going on behind the scenes. But no, sorry, Nuna, I wouldn't sign Ivan Tony. Uh, Matt G says, what do you make of Roy Keane criticising Brazil's dancing while celebrating the most unsurprising piece of analysis that you've ever heard from Roy? I don't care. Why does he care? Why does it matter? They're celebrating. They're dancing. You know, I understand dance is a big part of Brazilian culture. Um, that doesn't really affect my opinion of it. I think, you, could, you know, relatively within reason, you kind of do what you want in that sense because I, I just don't really necessarily see, uh, I don't see that being a, a problem. And I think if you're really angry about that, I think that probably says more about you than it does about a celebration. Goodness me. Anyway, Benji uh, says, Morning, Tom. I've been seeing some Sane links lately. He would be good if by some miracle he wants to come. We should be absolutely going for him. Uh, I have seen these links to Leroy Sane. I haven't really included them in the show because they're kind of not coming from the best of places at the moment. Uh, if they, if that changes, of course, we'll start discussing in more detail. Would I take Leroy Sane? Of course. It's not even a question. Absolutely, I would take Leroy Sane. Uh, Inga says, if Jesus is out for three months, do you think that will affect our chances for top four? I don't mm, I, I think it affects the ch chances of everything, you know, because it's a significant loss. I still would be very confident about us making top four and staying for that period in the title race as much as we can. It is going to rely, of course, on Eddie and Ketia doing a very good job in the absence of Jesus, however. Uh, Marcus says, I know unlikely, but if we were to sign a striker, who is the most similar to Jesus? Oh, that's a good question. You have to find someone that's collaborative, that's small, that's getting plenty of assists. And trying to find somebody like that is not easy. Um, 
I'd have to have a longer think about that, Marcus, than off the top of my head, I'm afraid. But uh, it's very difficult to find players as good as and as collaborative as uh, and as, you know, with the kind of mentality of winning the leagues like Jesus does. Very difficult indeed. Uh, Max Stays Black says, uh, Tom, what's your goal of the World Cup so far? For me, it's the Richarlison one, pure technique. Um, what's my goal of the World Cup so far? You know, I love Brazil's first goal, you know, the Vinicius Junior one. I thought that was brilliant. I thought that was an amazing piece of passing and moving. Uh, and then the finish on his right foot was so calm. It was such a calm piece of work to then just chip it. I love Mamba, uh, with the assist from Turam on the left and then swinging that into the right-hand side. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name that scored for, for Iran against Wales in the last moments as well, but that was a brilliant goal from outside the box, straight into the bottom right-hand corner. Um, yeah, there's been there's been some really good goals. Marcus Rashford's free kick. <laughs> I love a free kick that goes in like that. I thought that was excellent. Um, V-Dub says, when will we know more about Joseph's injury? Hopefully in the coming days. Fingers crossed we hear something, but scans will be undertaken. He is back at London Colney. He has undergone some some initial tests, I'm aware, yesterday. So hopefully we hear something back on it very soon. I'm very hopeful that we will. Whether or not is another thing, but I'm very hopeful we'll hear something very soon. Um, Ken says, hey, Tom, do you think the Wenger should be the next FIFA president? Are we concerned about his World Cup comments? No. I wasn't particularly happy with some of the things I've seen about Arsene Wenger recently. I wasn't happy with what he said. Um, I didn't agree with what he said about the political statements being made by the, that affecting you know team performances because that the correlation is not the same as causation. And also we saw a diversion of results anyway from other teams that didn't demonstrate. Um, and also being at FIFA, I, I, to be honest, I think FIFA should be kind of debunked at this point and just we should have something else instead of FIFA because FIFA I just think its name is so far through the mud uh, that there's nothing that can really recover it uh, at all uh, especially if you haven't watched the the FIFA Uncovered documentary definitely worth doing and Ars Blog did a fantastic interview on, on his channel as well on his more podcast rather than channel um, as well with the director I believe of uh, FIFA Uncovered if you haven't listened to it make sure you go and do that very good indeed um Raphael says, Arteta has created a team that is resilient. They will adjust without Jesus. Thanks, Tom, for yesterday's perspectives on the possible options. Thanks, mate. Um, Pink Panther says, I hate politics in my football. Um, this is a question that, or a comment that comes up a lot. Uh, the problem is, is that politics and football are always going to be intertwined. You know, the, the, the whole hashtag kick politics out of football, the whole let's keep politics out of football, it's impossible it's impossible to separate the two. Football is a global sport. Football is a sport that impacts things on an economic level, on a social level, and on a human level. And so politics is always going to be part of it. It is always going to be a part of it. And there's nothing that we can do to stop that. So I prefer, instead of saying, let's kick politics out of football, let's try and disassociate the game with the politics, that's never going to happen. And in fact, football is an exceptionally powerful thing. And so in the wrong hands, as I believe it to be in the wrong hands with FIFA, uh, it is never going to be, um, it's never going to be used uh, in all for good, unfortunately. And there are, as we've seen with this FIFA Uncovered documentary, evidence of how football can be used wrongly. So unfortunately, whilst I understand that people might hate that, and there's nothing wrong with saying that you hate politics regarding football, and I don't blame people for wanting to stay away from it. Football and politics are intertwined and will certainly be always involved in one another. Uh, and I think that football should always be used to try and highlight the good um, and highlight what is right uh, and highlight, you know, the moral compass of, of, of you know, what is, what is correct. And I think, that, you know, there are people that are at the World Cup, like Alex Scott, that have obviously put forth some what they feel to be powerful and I certainly agree to be powerful demonstrations of what I believe is also right um, and uh, yeah I know people as well who feel as though they couldn't go to this World Cup um, because of you know the laws that are there uh, unfortunately preventing people from going um, it's, it's about welcoming the world if you have a World Cup it is about welcoming the world and if it is illegal to be uh, who you are and without choice uh, of being who you are and you can't go, it's just not right, in my opinion. So, 
Yeah. And it is my opinion. And I'm more than happy to have conversations with people about it. So, uh, you know, me very open to be pr being proved wrong or having an argument and changing my mind on things. But on this, uh, I'm so far yet to have anyone change my view on it. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, Stephen says football should definitely involve pol politics. Uh, I fun It's funny how Rashford never got stick about the kids free meals. I might, might add it only happened through the support of Rashford's. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, when it's politics in a positive way, uh, Rashford with free school meals, Ozil with his meals, and there's lots of other footballers have done really positive things in relation to politics. Um, that's always talked about positively, but as soon as it's something that's divisive, we want to disassociate it. So I, I, th I think it's important that we maintain consistency when talking about things like this. And I certainly feel I am consistent in my view of these things. So if you don't think that, feel free to leave a comment and tell me why not. I'm more than open to having a discussion about it. Um, let's go to, uh, yeah, Vicky says, yeah, but I've never seen as much attention given to migrant workers as much as during this World Cup. The workers' plight has been bad for a long time. And this, uh, the, Vicky, I think for me, and I, I don't know why it's taken me so long on the channel to really have a conversation about this, I think because I focused on the news and your questions. Um, I think that, the, uh, the the what aboutisms I really don't like what aboutism. I think Elliot and the Arsenal Vision podcast talked about this really well. What aboutism is a really dangerous thing in my view because we can say that this thing's bad. Yeah, but what about this? And why didn't we talk about this as much? I think that's bad. I think that personally, if we bring up a problem, we should talk about this problem, tackle this problem. We don't tackle a problem by talking about a separate issue. We talk about every issue, and that's how we solve it. Right now, this is the moment to talk about this problem. We should have talked about it 10 years ago, 12 years ago. We should have stopped it from happening then. But a very famous saying of the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is right now. And if we're talking about it right now, we're talking about it. And I think it's progression. You know, where we are in 2022 compared to 2018 with the previous World Cup, we're four years on. We've progressed. There's no point regretting what we didn't do then. Let's focus on what we can do now. That is the way I look at things. I'm not going to regret the things I could have done before. I'm not the same person as I was before. I may not have been open to talking about things before as I am now. And I personally think that we should talk about these issues now because the opportunity is the present, not the past. And so, uh, yeah, what about isms and point taken, says Vicky? Um, what about ism, I think, is one of the biggest barriers to discussing and breaking you know, and really kind of tackling some of the biggest issues that there are uh, in sport and what there is in sport. So, yeah, I think you have to tackle an issue. And to tackle that issue, we can't then say, but what about this? What about this? Let's talk about this issue and let's talk about that issue and then talk about the next issue and just keep talking about all of the issues, you know. And if someone talks about one issue more than another, maybe it's because they've got more links to that. You know, I wouldn't necessarily criticize someone for saying, why are you talking about this? You know, why are you talking about that issue? Why aren't you talking about this one? Well, you know, we're talking about this one right now. Let's talk about this. And then we can have a conversation about another issue as well. Uh, I don't want to, you know, curb people's uh, activism um, for the right reasons by trying to undermine that by saying, well, why didn't we do enough about this other issue? Let's talk about all of the issues. Uh, I think that's the most important thing for sure. Anyway, I think that's probably the best way to uh, finish today's show. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. As I said, uh, we'll be recording, hopefully, fingers crossed tonight, the first what I'm going to, what, what, what is it when movies, when they have like the secret names for movies? At the moment, what's being dubbed the Arsenal Fitness Podcast, but I'm going to be hopefully changing that. Um, and uh, we'll obviously well, we'll obviously see where it goes. It's, I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Uh, and I'm, so, I'm really looking forward to seeing the feedback that we get as well from you guys and how we can involve you guys. I'm going to continue to try and read through the messages that I haven't yet replied to. I know there's quite a few, so apologies if I haven't. Um, I haven't really, you know, been able to reply to all of them. So sorry about that, but I'm going to try and read through them. I am working today, so bear with me, but I will try and get around to replying to everybody as I can. Thank you for listening. I will see you again very, very soon. And as always, up the Arsenal.